Hello again, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Joe Hindi, the Android Authority app guy. It's nearing the end of the month, so it's time to round up the best Android apps and games from January of 2015. First up this month is Adobe Lightroom Mobile. Using this, you can edit, organize, and otherwise manage your photos and other images. There have been some issues, including compatibility and space issues. However, if you can get past that, this is a powerful photo editor that can be used in tandem with the desktop version, assuming you use and pay for a Creative Cloud subscription. Asana is a task management platform aimed at teams of people who need to get work done. Technically, this application has existed for a long time, but it was essentially a wrapper for the mobile site, and it was pretty awful. Now it's a native Android app with material design and it's way better than it was before. There are still some issues here and there, but this is a big step forward and an application to keep an eye on. Camu is a popular photo editing application that was very popular on iOS and has finally made its way to Android. It features the ability to shoot videos and photos with live effects applied, collages, text, various effects, super focus, and auto enhance mode. It's free with in-app purchases, but believe it or not, the in-app purchases really aren't that bad. Crossy Road is about as big a hit as any app could possibly be on the Amazon App Store and it eventually saw its release on Google Play. It's kind of like Frogger in that you must cross many, many roads. The graphics aren't great, but the gameplay is surprisingly fun. There is no story or anything ridiculous, but it's a solid and difficult time waster that costs nothing to download. Square Enix continues to re-release their old collection of games here in 2015, and first up this year is Dragon Quest V. Much like others in the series, the game is played entirely in portrait mode, which is unique for a video game. It also features full camera control, monster catching, AI battles for easier level grinding, and a whole lot more. It's a tad expensive at $14.99, but at least there are no in-app purchases. Facebook Lite was developed for those who use budget phones. It's optimized for 2G internet and its less is more design is great for weaker processors. Unfortunately, you can only get it officially from the Play Store if you have a terrible phone. It's less than one megabyte in size and includes the core Facebook functionality, including chats, without any of the extra frills. If your device isn't compatible, we'll have a link to the direct APK download in the video description below. Google Classroom is a classroom environment that allows teachers and parents to help students learn by creating a virtual classroom environment. It was only available as a web application for a long time, but it is now available on Android and iOS. It allows students to take and upload pictures to Classroom, interact with the platform in general, chat with students live, and a whole lot more. Lego Bionicle is a hack and slash style game where you must pick your Lego hero and kill a bunch of bad guys. The graphics and controls are actually pretty good even if the storyline is a tad shallow. It is totally free to play with no in-app purchases which is a rarity and thanks to its mild nature it's a great game for kids. LibreOffice Viewer is a document viewing application released in beta this last month. It is in beta, so if you find bugs, it would be better to report them than to give the app a bad review because it is a beta and bad reviews are kind of useless when the app is a beta. Aside from the beta related issues, the app seems to be progressing nicely and even hit 4 out of 5 star rating on Google Play recently. It's also nice to see official LibreOffice on Android, even if it's just a document viewer. Last on our list this month is Manual Camera. This application takes full advantage of the Camera 2 API in Lollipop, so as you can probably guess, this application is only for people who use Lollipop. It lets you adjust things like shutter speed, focus distance, ISO, white balance, and exposure compensation. The compatible device list is pretty slim, so read the description before downloading. Well, that about does it for this video, folks. Once again, I'm Joe Hendy, the Android Authority app guy. While you're here, why not subscribe to the Android Authority YouTube channel? If you're hanging out for a minute, we have a couple of awesome videos for you to watch right over there and they're also linked in the video description below for you folks on mobile. Finally, don't forget to check out the written companion as well as all of these wonderful apps which are linked in the video description below. As always, thanks for watching everybody and have a wonderful day.